Greetings. Um, today I'm going to talk about a film that is 50 years old and is one of the most influential and beloved horror films of all time. Uh, I did spawn a s franchise, though the subsequent uh, films to come after this one, you know, the quality hasn't always been necessarily a top-notch and so most of them are not looked at very highly whereas this film is regarded as a masterpiece and that is of course the texas chainsaw massacre um in short this film is about uh five uh college students basically um at least college age. They're all like in their twenties or some somewhere in the twenties, maybe late teens for one or two of them. But uh two of them, uh Sally and uh, Franklin are <clears throat> you know, their siblings and uh their grandfather, you know uh, they're going to visit his grave as well as um going to the old like family house and which hasn't been taken care of in quite some time and uh franklin's in a wheelchair which uh because this is a horror film that will definitely uh come important later but you know uh as uh time goes on you know they meet some interesting people. There's a hitchhiker that he pick up for a brief period before he goes and cuts himself and cuts Franklin's arm just because he's out of his mind. And then, of course, uh, there is the, <clears throat> you know, the cook uh, who works at a gas station that we see a few times. And he is uh, somebody who... There is a pretty good amount of humor uh, with him, I think, in particular. Though, uh, Toby Hooper, who directed this and co-wrote it, and he also produced it, um, said, you know, he made the sequel to this uh, full-on black comedy because I said, I thought this was a hilarious film. Unfortunately, nobody under nobody saw the humor in it. So, you know, it's very, like, to him, this is a black comedy. Um, <clears throat> but again, it, well, the way everything uh, is shot and um, everything was, looks like a documentary, which is really cool. Um, but, you know, and because of that, and also the fact that this was inspired somewhat by uh, Ed Gein, yeah, who, was, uh, who killed two women in Wisconsin and also had like lampshades made out of human skin and other uh, such uh, uh, disturbing stuff going on with him. Uh, people believe this was actually true. And of course, at the very beginning of the film, there's like a uh, narration with text scrolling up saying, the story you're about to see is true, basically. <laughs> that kind of thing. And so everybody believes Everything you see in this movie actually happened when not really. It's one of those things where it's based on a true story when either it's very loosely based on a true story or events that happened or none of it happened at all. They're just saying it's based on a true story because uh, other movies did and they use that uh, little... A thing you could put at the very beginning of a movie or on a poster and uh, people will buy it even though there is not a one single true thing in the movie at all and even if you watch them <laughs> to the end of the credits it might say the characters and events of this film are completely entirely fictitious and this and anything uh, any individual or events that actually Individual individuals or events that actually occur are completely coincidental and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
Um, and another thing that's interesting is uh, Toby Hooper said this film in his mind should have always been rated PG because there's no sex, there's not a lot of profanity, you know, no nudity. Um, you know, there's some sort of, I guess. You know, some very fairly romantic stuff with uh, two characters, Kirk and Pam. You know, because you like getting fairly sensual and all, but you know, you don't see them do anything outside of like kiss and whatever. But so they don't. Uh, you don't see them do anything uh, on camera, or that's overtly explicit. I could get a, this to be an R rating, <clears throat> and the violence isn't all that there like a lot of people think this is one of the most bloodiest and goriest films of all time also the fact that it has a, a massacre in the title as well as you know chainsaw you know chainsaw massacre that kind of makes people think this is a completely intense and gory film where uh sure it could be i could see it being intense for some people but overall it's no more uh, intense than any other film that came out in that time period, but um, or later, <laughs> actually, <laughs> many films that came out after this uh, were more intense. So there you go. Um, but um, Uh, the kills that happen, you know, not very bloody or gory. I mean, there is blood. And, um, and I guess, spoiler to anybody who's never seen this, there's only one kill with a chainsaw. And I won't say who, but just let's just say that it's a character that a lot of people are annoyed with. And when they get killed, people are typically happy because he was, like, they, they were just, bleh. He, she, whoever it was. Yeah, people are not... They did not like that character, really, because they were just annoying. And this the individual playing the character stayed in character all the time because they believed if they ever turned uh, them off because their character was whiny all the time. And just like, you know... You know, the kind of person like you would just hate to even stand, uh, have to uh, be around for more than a second. Like, that's how annoying they are. And so when this character gets killed, people are typically happy. And also Gunnar Hansen plays Weatherface. So that was like, that was definitely a kill that he was looking forward to. Like, uh, just just annoying and so that was a very satisfying you know kill uh to make and uh but of course you know he was very uh you know he's one of those guys who they play like killers and such and, and films like this They're like the nicest guys you know kane hotter big tall guy known for being jason Voorhees in four of friday the 13th films one of the nicest guys of all time. Um, but he's really big. And looks very imposing. But, yeah. So, you know. Um, obviously, I got this version, this 4K version, last year. Uh, and one of my various, you know, like Blu-ray updates and all. So, you know, this is 4K and the second disc is a bl normal Blu-ray, but this is the 4K UHD Blu-ray disc. Yeah, they both look like that. And uh there was another uh the version of the 4K version which you know, but it's region locked to the region 2 and so I live in Region A land, and so I got this, because the Steelbook looked cool. And, of course, you have the uh, original poster uh, uh, as the cover. And then, um, uh, here is the uh, uh, or, uh, cover of the normal version of the 4K 
set it in a version of this, at least here, in region A land. And then, of course, you have the original poster, which I like more. I mean, I like this more. This just looks cool. Who will, survive, who will survive and what will be left of, of them? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. America's most bizarre and brutal crimes. And Pam is on a meat hook with uh, Leatherface uh, revving up the chainsaw. So, you know, uh, and I will, uh, why not, why not just uh, pop out the discs and show you the inside also. I know I did this, but that was quite some time ago, about like a year ago or so, so, or at least about it. Yeah, come on, man. Famous dinner scene. And this is what the discs look like. It's the same on both, so there you go. Okay. Yeah, you gotta do this. Yeah, you gotta put one here. I like how uh, this has all the special features from, like, the DVDs and the Blu-ray release, as well as no new stuff. And um, there is a 50th anniversary version of this out, you know, in limited quantity. Problem is, it's 300 bucks because it comes in, uh, <clears throat> you know, the new version has all the stuff here that is on here plus some new stuff with it but so it's this plastic chainsaw this is Ch Texas Chainsaw like 50th anniversary of you know this and um with it you get uh, the chainsaw is like it keeps the film in and there's a VHS copy as well as a 4k blu-ray and blu-ray version which I wouldn't mind uh, getting that version because looks like it has a similar transfer to this which is nice and this is a great transfer you get to see it still being grainy which helps with the atmosphere of this film you know sometimes film is very grainy and it doesn't you know it was never intended to be like that and shouldn't have been but it was, and so sometimes they get rid of as much of it as possible, and rightfully so. And then other times, it's like you got rid of so much, it just looks too polished. Um, but yeah, it was 300 bucks for uh, another version of. 4K normal Blu-ray release with some new cool stuff, as well as um, a VHS copy. And um, yeah, I don't know. For, for 
I could see perhaps like a new version of this being maybe like 35 or 40 dollars you know 50th anniversary so you know i could perhaps see that you know being justifiable with all the stuff that's on there in terms of like extras and the look and sound and everything um that it, it has as well as and then perhaps sell the vhs tape separately you know get the 4k new 4k version as well as the vhs version you could do something with two of them and then um but yeah the the, the chainsaw uh like little case to keep both of them in it just is from everything i've looked at and what i've read from people who have actually got it it's just plastic it's like a fairly hard plastic that you know um you know <clears throat> well, from as as far as i'm aware it won't break necessarily easily i mean it could break but still it's fairly decent plastic but still plastic nonetheless it's not like it's made of metal or whatever and so you know wanted to try to recoup some of the investments they made into this sort of like limited edition set but I would hope that at some point they do release a version of this, of this new set with the 4K and Blu-ray with a, a set on its own, as well as um, the uh, VHS tape for those who just like to have one <laughs> the, made in the in 2024. Um, just for the novel of it. And you could probably have those two together, minus the chainsaw thing that it would, that I guess it normally comes in. They both come in now, but uh, with that, but yeah. Leatherface, uh, definitely an interesting character. You know, he doesn't really speak what he does is like gibberish <laughs> uh unintelligible <laughs> and everything you know <laughs> uh, the cook uh, he, he's, he's interesting character well, all of them are interesting characters i guess particularly the the people at the end who are sort of like behind the oddness and weirdness going on um but yeah that's my general thoughts of this film great film i enjoy it uh really great um a classic film and the sequels remakes reboots prequel to the remake and uh, all that May not necessarily uh, uh, come to par with this film, but regardless of all the subsequent uh, films that come after this within the franchise, this will always stand as a full-on masterpiece in and of its own, and uh, and rightfully so. always uh enjoyed watching this and um yeah what about you do you do you enjoy this if you've seen it do you not why or why not you can answer however you like uh or you don't have to answer at all and just uh maybe you see that like yeah interesting kind of rambled but whatever Seems to happen quite a bit. Uh, so I do think I at least uh, stayed on uh, topic overall. I didn't really talk much about anything else, so that's good. Um, yeah. Anyway, hope you're all uh, doing well. Hope you all... Uh, have had a great week. 
Hope you all have a great day. Hope your day is going well. Hope you'll have a great weekend, a great week next week, and I'll uh, see you all next time.